Uh, it's great to see so many of you on the call today. Uh, I'm Hannah Lyons, I'm Chair of National Maternity Voices. You're not going to be hearing very much from me today, um, but I'm just here to let you know that this is the first Emma in a Taylor. series of webinars which National Maternity has Voices joined the conference with NHS England. Um, and we've chosen this topic today, how we can ensure that our MVPs are safe spaces has for joined the conference. Uh, because this is so central to everything that MVPs are about, making sure that all women are able to get their voices heard um, and that when they make their voices heard that they're listened Kathy to um, and that they can join the conference to improve maternity services. We also chose this subject because when we asked MVPs what they wanted to learn about in these webinars, this was the number one issue that people wanted to hear about. So I'm actually going to hand over now um, to Toyin Adjita, who's going to facilitate today's webinar. Toyin is a member of the National Maternity Voices Committee and is also chair of Lewisham MVP. Um, and Toyin will introduce our other speakers, and we've got a fantastic group of women today to share their experience and their knowledge and their ideas with all of you. And we'll also have a time altogether. Yeah. Um, morning everyone and thank you again as well uh, for joining us. So the just the purpose of today's webinar is for participants to understand the importance of MVPs being safe spaces for BAME women, for participants to consider what we can each do to support this, to share useful resources. Has joined the conference the national support that would um, help MVPs to be inclusive of all entities. So before I go on to um, our other speakers today, I just want to say that this is a safe space for all and we acknowledge that we are all on different journeys regarding this issue, so it's important for us all to be really respectful. Um, so now over to our amazing Chief Midwifery Officer, Jackie. Uh, Jacqueline Dunkley. Ben. Hello, um, I'm delighted to be able to contribute to this amazing uh, series um, that is, I'm sure is going to inspire many people, um, least of all me, to keep on this really important journey of ensuring that we have the safest maternity care provision in the world right here in England. And to do that and to meet our national ambition to um, reduce perinatal mortality, morbidity and brain injury by 50% by 2025, we must have joined the conference. Those women within our population that have an increased risk of um, uh, experiencing poor outcomes or sadly who die. So, and these are women from black, Asian, minority, ethnic backgrounds, but also are socioeconomically disadvantaged women. And today's webinar is about identifying that they have esteemed knowledge, esteemed and privileged knowledge. Don't have. So, if we want Has to join the conference, we need to capture their view, their esteemed knowledge so that we can truly shape our direction of travel. So the Maternity Voices Partnership um, really have a, a, a real privilege of being able to hear all these, well, I'm hoping so. Uh, um, so to hear voices from the most have joined the conference. engage with them, and we frequently talk about um, uh, hard to reach group, but we need to really unpack that and rethink that because women that find, we find it difficult to engage them, not necessarily the other way around. So the voice um, is key, um, hearing the narrative is key, and listening is so significant. Unless we listen appropriately, we won't be able to shape our services authentically. Has joined the conference. Our maternity services are for all people. So why is this a particular issue and why this particular focus? Well, I mentioned the national ambition um, at the start of, of my talk. If we are to achieve that reduction, if we are to ensure that, our, that having a baby in England is the guys. safest place in the world to give birth, the conference. we need to have a Michelle. more data 
that some of us may find has joined the conference, to look at, but this has is left reality. the conference. We can no longer gloss over um, these data. We can no, no longer turn the page. The gap for inequalities in terms of outcomes for mum and baby, in it, baby has been widening since 2013. So you can see for yourselves here in relation to mortality has for joined the conference. Have their babies right here where we are now. And that's quite startling for many to look at, but that's the reality. In England today, this is our reality. In addition to that, black babies um, of uh, black uh, British um, uh, mums have 121% has joined the conference for stillbirth today, 50% increased risk for neonatal death. So not only is their mortality, a disproportionate mortality attached to their mum, even as a baby, you have this um, outcome, this inequality in outcome. And as I say, the gap is widening. If you happen to be Asian, Asian British, you've seen the data for Asian, Asian British mums. If we take that to babies, Asian babies have a 66% increased risk of neonatal death dying within the first four weeks of life, and an increased risk of stillbirth around 55% in comparison to white counterparts. And babies born to mothers in the most deprived quintile have a 30% increased risk of neonatal mortality. And as I say, the gap is widening. So, you know, it's really important not just to look at these data, but really internalize them because this is not acceptable for our services, our maternity care provision today. We need to do better and we need to move further, faster. So just looking at um, some of the reasons why, well, there are many reasons why, but um, I thought I'd just share, because we haven't touched on mental health and we're looking at health holistically, not just about physical health, but morbidity relates to mental well-being as well. And there was this really interesting study, only published recently, that um, looked at explore the relationship between ethnicity, migration, and mental health indicators. And the conclusion was, there are no surprises to this conclusion, but nonetheless, this is good evidence. And migrant women are more likely to be at high risk of poor mental health in the perinatal period and beyond. And so there is something, I won't go through the whole detail, but there is something about us having an ability to, um, to listen, um, to empower, to empathize, so that we're truly are getting a full picture of the unspoken word. It's not just about what people say, but it's about what people don't say. And I believe that midwives are in a prime position because of this super unique relationship that they have with women, that we have, that I have as a midwife with women, to foster and develop that relationship so that we can see the things that aren't spoken and we can ask sensitive questions to elicit some of these challenges that women are having in their everyday lives. So what else do we know? Well, for those of you that aren't familiar um, with the NHS Constitution, the NHS Constitution speaks to this particular issue. We need to ensure that our healthcare is responsive and um, meets the needs of all people who use our wondrous NHS, and in particular for today's uh, webinar, our maternity services. So if I can just Has have left you, the um, conference. think a little bit about how we provide maternity care and Marmot's principles of proportionate universalism. So where we have a particular need for the 136 maternity care providers in England. They, we know our geography. So I'm now speaking about heads and directors of midwifery, consultant midwives, lead midwives for education, the leaders of our profession. They, we know where our areas of greatest need are. And therefore, what Marmot says is that your healthcare provision must be, of course it must be universal, 
universal and free at the point of entry, and we're really proud of that, but it must be proportionate to the level of disadvantage and need, and that is proportionate universalism. So where, for example, in areas across England where there's um, a community that may well experience high levels of uh, female genital mutilation, or where we have a travelling community, head directors of midwifery develop their services to meet those needs. The same should apply for those people that are more likely to experience morbidity or more likely to die. So black, Asian, minority, ethnic women, care should be tailored to meet their needs. Proportionate universalism should be at a pace and intensity that is equal to the level of need. Rachel Flaczynski. Sorry, I'm late, everybody. Who joins the conference? So if we deploy um, proportionate universalism, then we have started to help to reduce inequality in health outcomes because our care will be more personalized and responsive to the needs of those particular groups of people, the people that we talked about, the people that you saw on that previous slide have a huge um, inequality in health outcomes in comparison to their white counterparts and also those that are socioeconomically disadvantaged. So we have a plan, and you're all familiar with Better Birth, the report of the National Maternity Review. We're three years into that plan. We're also talking about the um, NHS long-term plan that has some great um, initiatives and ambition for reducing mortality. Has joined the conference. But actually improving health outcomes for all. Um, so we, we're all familiar with personalized care. We're familiar with continuity of carer. I'm the national lead for continuity of carer. If we have continuity of carer for most women in England, that's the better birth ambition by 2021, most women will have continuity of carer, then we will help to reduce that inequality in outcome gap. Continuity, it, this isn't a webinar about continuity, but it would be remiss of me if I didn't just mention that it is the relational part of continuity of carer that helps to improve outcomes. So that, that unique relationship that I talked about previously, where the woman um, trusts the person that's caring for her, and in this particular situation it's the midwife, then she is more likely to disclose. She's more likely to have timely access. She's more likely to trust and all the things that that therapeutic relationship will offer to her during her pregnancy journey. Also, there's informational continuity and there's management continuity that help to achieve the outcome of improved um, um, outcomes for mums and babies and also the improved experience that continuity of carer um, promises. We also Has have- joined the conference. Take, Right to the last bullet point of um, this particular slide, I'm really delighted that in the long-term plan, the NHS long-term plan, the maternity contribution to that long-term plan is phenomenal. I think it's phenomenal. I can't, I'm not going to speak about other elements of the long-term plan, but one particular element that's relevant today is, is that by 2024, 75% of women from a black Black British, Asian, Asian British ethnic background, and women from the 10% of neighborhoods that are most deprived nationally will receive continuity of carer. Why? Because the continuity of carer is a vehicle for improving outcomes. So I mentioned proportionate universalism. You apply um, this um, approach to providing care to areas of greatest need. And we will then watch um, improved outcomes for this group of women, which will equal uh, the reduction in perinatal mortality, morbidity, and maternal mortality. So I'm delighted to be able to share that with you. Together, we will help to improve these outcomes. That's why I'm here today. Um, national Voices, National Women's Voices, uh, Maternity Voices Partnership all play a significant part because you're the ones that ensure that we have this privileged knowledge, this esteemed knowledge that only women 
um, who experience maternity care or are on their childbirth continuum, only those women can contribute that esteemed knowledge to us. We can't do it. A PhD can't do it. A degree can't do it. Reading a book can't do it. This is about esteemed knowledge, esteemed knowledge from somebody's experience. And it's that knowledge that will help us to shape our maternity services so that we can Has joined the conference. We have the best maternity care provision in the world. And that's my ambition as the first ever Chief Midwifery Officer for England. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jacqueline, for that. And I those of us who are not familiar with the um, Embrace has left the, the conference. conference. The figures and to have a better understanding and to seek out further information. And towards the end of this, we will be able to have a bit more of a deeper discussion um, of points that have maybe been raised. Um, so now I'm going to move on to. Um, Annie Ruff, who is the Vice Chair for Lewisham MVP. Mona. Has joined the conference. Thank you, Jackie, for that great um, piece of information. And thank you, Toyin. Um, as she said, my name's Annie Ruff. I'm the Vice Chair of the Lewisham MVP. I'm coming from the perspectives as Vice Chair, as Service user, and also the lead of a community group. Um, so how do we create safe spaces? By providing venues, time, and facilitators. Facilitators could be peers or those that can empathize and recognize the need of representation. Um, ideas for attracting discussion, encouraging participation. Has joined the conference. Elected representation to engage with their communities. Uh, we also need to, as MVPs, we need to also look at our representation within our own groups. Does that reflect the demographic of the, the area? Um, also, uh, within the communities, there are various groups, um, Asian groups, black groups, women's groups, etc. And how do we engage? Um, within each area, there is opportunities for outreach, such as involving children's centers. Children's centers have a huge database of community groups. Um, and local authorities also have a huge database. Um, they have SEM services. They have social services. And uh, many groups um, register with the local authority regarding funding. Um, also, your councillors, local councillors, know what's happening within the regions. Um, creating safe space for feedback discussion. And that could be done within the, the venues where we can um, get women together to discuss their issues to discuss their experiences. Uh, it can be done within the maternity uh, spaces, maybe antenatal, maybe post-antenatal, mm -hmm. um, maybe through the, uh, the, the midwives, maybe through the visiting midwif midwives after birth. So there's plenty of opportunities for, for us to interact uh, within the MVP spaces and within community groups and community leads. Um, as I said, there's many voices within the communities. For myself, as I said, I represent a community um, of families who have children with disabilities. So within that, we're talking about disability and we're also talking about ethnic ethnicity as well. So um, one, of the, one of the things that um, Jackie spoke about was mental health. And I suppose it's obvious that the parents that may suffer from mental distress, mental health, more than likely um, would be women who have had a diagnosis, their child's been diagnosed with an extra need, um, particularly Down syndrome, not particularly Down syndrome. Well, Down syndrome is a genetic one that is diagnosed as soon as birth or pre-birth. Um, so depending on your area, 
um, such as Lewisham that have a high demographic, high demographic of um, has Asian left the conference. and minorities. So creating safe spaces, yes, engage with your community leads, look at your own um, demographic in your area um, and also with local authority and councillors. Um, so that's my five minutes. That was quick, but I believe that was quite succinct and quite simple, really. Thank you. Thank you, <laughs> That's brilliant. Thank you. And moving on to Mary Ann O'Connor, Chair for Greenwich MVP. And I'm definitely going to bring the tone down um, for all the, the, the very eloquent speaking that's already been done. Um, <laughs> Um, yeah, anyone who knows me knows that I, you know, um, yeah, I kind of speak from the heart and, uh, <laughs> and um, yeah, not not as eloquent, but, you know, hopefully um, slightly engaging. Um, so, Annie was talking about um, giving people space, um, and that space um, can be thought of in a, a number of different ways, and that you can create a, a meeting space for someone to come, but if they can't pay for a bus fare, or if they haven't got someone to look after their children, or, you know, they've got more than one child, they've got a child that's with them and a child in school. Um, you know, there's there's many different barriers to coming to meetings, and there's also barriers to actually having your voice heard. Um, many people are not um, not used to having their voice heard, and, um, and that is a reflection of our society um, in general, because, yeah, um, the current climate is, is such after Brexit that um, there is um, there is a reluctance to come forward. Um, which, sorry, <laughs> I, get, I always get really sad when I say that. Um, that it's important to allow people to have the space to say what they need to say about the care that they've received, what, whatever that care was. I mean, obviously it's great, and I hear a lot of stories from um, black and ethnic minority women, um, black and um, community market stores that they've had a great experience. One went to the birth centre, it was fabulous. Um, yeah, and someone else said, uh, yeah, so it was, I think there was a lot of birth centre action, I think, that week. Uh, people were very happy about the birth centre, which is good. Um, but the, they, um, they sometimes don't have very happy stories. I've had a, a couple of women come and say, um, like by by email to to talk about their stillbirth and um, about uh, care that they received that wasn't quite so safe, and it's creating space for those conversations and don't it might be uncomfortable but don't shut them down and if um, someone if someone if someone mentions the R word then you know you have to take it seriously you you definitely have to take them seriously anyway. But there's no um, there's no shutting down um, to be done here. There there must be space for people to say what they need to say. Uh, left the conference. So the next point was no tokenism. So listen and act. So that kind of relates to the first one um, in that you hear the people saying what they need to say about the care they're receiving or why they didn't come and book in um, soon enough for you know why they didn't come and book in quickly in their pregnancy. Um, or, you know, there's, there's a whole host of reasons. Um, it might be because they're um, a recent um, migrant to the country and they don't quite know the, the lay of the land, or it, it, it could be for lots and lots of different reasons. Um, but whatever is said, um, it, having people, having a diverse population in your MVP is not just a tick box exercise, it has to, has to mean something. Um, so, what we've done in our MVP is that we've, um, our lovely consultant midwife, um, Sophie Russell, did an audit of Lewisham and Greenwich's um, um, migrant and refugee um, patients and to see how the, the charging um, had, had impacted them, which was, um, the, the, the results were, were not surprising, but there are some recommendations that have come out of that. And um, another thing we've done is that we've, um, Myself and Torian had a, a meeting with the um, director of midwifery at Lewisham and Greenwich, and we um, we talked about unconscious bias training, um, which which leads me on to the third one, and that everyone involved in MVPs um, should examine their own prejudices or unconscious biases because we all have them, and it's really it can be uncomfortable to to recognise and to sit with it, but um, we want to make sure that everyone is heard and everyone. 
is, is considered important in, in NHS services. And basically, um, there, there is so much out there that we don't even, we don't, so yeah, it's called unconscious biases for a reason. I mean, we don't see it and we, um, we don't, I don't know, maybe we don't always have the mind space to engage with it, but I'm saying that everyone needs to create the mind space to engage with that. And it's, um, it's easy to explain things away, um, like as a lack of communication or whatever. I know continuity of care will be great for improving communication and relationships between, um, between people. We can start. Um, can you hear me, Rebecca? So, is there anyone else who wanted to um, ask any questions or share any ideas? Yeah. Um, so, uh, I, so this is sorry. I, it's definitely. Is that, can, I, can we ask some questions and stuff now? Yes, you're more than welcome to. Sorry, you said this was Emily. It's Emily Ahmed. Um, in North Central London. Has joined the conference. Hi, Emily. Thank you. Rebecca Steinfeld. Hi. Hi. So, um, Has joined so, the okay. conference. Some of them, some people know about some of the work we did, uh, this peer-led research last year, and, and a lot of it was with um, DME women in North Central London. And it was just really okay. interesting listening to the Women's Hour program yesterday, because it raised so many of the same issues. And we had stories of, uh, of women being told that they were strong African women and didn't need pain relief, or that they'd be back soon with their next baby, and about um, migrant women having just such deep mistrust for their midwives. And um, and I guess the kind of what I wanted to ask was around how can we best share those stories? Because we, we gathered those stories, we've got them, and what our next project now we're looking at is how, how we best make sure that they're heard. Because essentially, Has left the, the conference. The women are hard to hear, but I think sometimes the stories are really hard to hear. And when you're trying to feed back experiences of like racism and prejudice, um, that's a really hard thing to tell people and, and professionals who are already stressed and you know, how do we make sure that, that that can be responded to? I think that's a really brilliant point, Rebecca, because we as MVP share that, that we often hear very difficult stories. And when you, ha you know, throw in essentially things that are, I'm going to use the R word, racist, um, the stereotypes which are extremely dangerous relating to the woman who was told she didn't need painkillers, um, Again, when you have to forward this information on, there is that worry of how it's received. And um, I do know that people in the room do have had personal experience of that, um, but this is part of what we do. This is the point of Maternity Voices Partnership, is we are bringing that voice. And I don't know if, well, I suppose relating to Mary Ann, for those professionals who find it difficult to hear that information, they have to examine why. It's easy if it's not your experience, if it's easy it's not your story, that you know, it's shoes you've never walked in, to brush it under the table and try and blank it out, or at, you know, it's easy to be very dismissive over it. But actually, if we go to what um, Jacqueline has been talking about, for things to change, people have to unpick those things about themselves. So, um, yeah, does anyone else want to add to that? Sorry, thank you. Mary Ann, go. Yeah, it's me again. Um, hopefully, it won't cut out this time. I think I was the, the, the text on that. Um, yeah, I was just, I just echo everything that Toyin said and that um, the conversations are, are difficult, but we have to start sitting with you know, the discomfort if we're going to see change because the um, inequality is, is increasing and, and you know and there are more there are more um, the, the number of black women dying in relation to white women is increasing. So we, we need to look at every every possible cause and we need everyone needs to take all of these um, you know different factors into account and said, I mean, we can't be sensitive about it. The time for sensitivity is past. <laughs> yeah. Um, does anyone else have anything they, I mean, Rebecca, do you want anything, do you have anything else to add to that? Rebecca Steinfeld. Yes. Yeah. yeah, hi. Yeah, I guess I'm just thinking, yes, the time for sensitivity is past, absolutely, with a maternal mortality rate that is five times higher for black women. At the same time, um, one needs to be heard. So I feel like 
my sense is that how do we have these conversations with healthcare professionals without them feeling defensive, without them feeling that they're being accused of, you know, racism or that their service is being accused of being institutionally racist in some way, you know, in a way that's constructive and actually leads to sort of continued dialogue and service improvements. I mean, I don't see, I, I'm not quite sure how to do that. Um, it's so, it's so, so we're, we're about to do a bit of work on that and trying to explore it because that's basically our biggest challenge at the moment. So we can share what we learn from that over the next couple of months, but it would be great if there was like kind of more room to be able to, I don't know, to work on that all together like this webinar, but kind of moving forward because I feel like that's our biggest challenge. Are you are, are you suggesting that it's Jackie Dunkley Bent speaking? Are you saying that um, women are experiencing being told this, having this uh, this narrative shared with them, and and health professionals then becoming defensive if they're challenged? If, if that's the case, I, I think I, I don't think there is um, any maternity um, uh, provider in terms of the leadership team that would not want to hear this information. And, and I think the vehicle for ensuring that this narrative is right on the table is through your, MV, your local MVP, um, safety in numbers. Some people feel vulnerable and, and exposed when they're champion in a cause. So maybe a, a, a collective um, a meeting uh, with, with the leaders, uh, managers, the director, head and midwifery, uh, the consultant midwife leadership team to really put this, um, these, these narratives on the table. There's nothing better than plain speaking and seeing it as it is because we all want to, I'm speaking now from the midwifery um, perspective, that we, we want our services to be the best that they can be. And, and, and unless we hear this frank feedback from yourselves, we're never going to have joined the conference. People will naturally have prejudices and stereotypes. That's a natural way of being. But what we have to do is ensure that when people enter our organisation, they enter the organisation in, in a neutral way because it's, it's the best care. It's not, you know, a, a little bit of this and a little bit of that. It's the best care, meeting people where they're at, personalised care, ensuring that we improve outcomes. And we can't do that by saying that big, strong African women can do certain things or whatever the narrative was. We, we need to meet people where they're at. Um, I'm going to, if that's okay, um, jump on to Jacqueline's plain speaking, uh, Rebecca, because it becomes, when you hear from women who obviously give their feedback, they also take a view that they somehow should be protecting the person who has been you know, unconsciously being either racist, disrespectful, and actually it's not about the, essentially the person who's received that poor care doing that. It's for the professional to actually put their own ego, whatever it is, aside about themselves and realize it's not actually about them. It's about the person they're caring for. Uh, so, yeah, I, I do just, again, I agree with everything Jacqueline's just said, but I think when it comes down to how these, how things change, it is about people not thinking about themselves. It's about the person that's in front of them, and that's it. There's no other, you know, like Jacqueline said, people's perceptions, views aren't going to change. But once somebody steps in that door, once they have that professional hat on, it's not about what their views and feelings are, unless it is, of course, compassionate and caring. And that's all. We want all of that good stuff. But anything other than that, it just has to go elsewhere and not to the person you're dealing with. Um, um, yeah, I mean, there's quite a lot of good discussion going on in the chat box. Um, so it's quite hard to summarise it all. Um, but, yeah, a lot of it has been about how do we raise these questions with people. Catherine Kelly is suggesting maybe we need to um, talk about understanding privilege first. Um, do you want to say anything about that, Catherine? Just suggesting that if we put privilege in context, then it's easier for people to understand, um, because people understand, for example, that men have more privilege than women, and able-bodied people have more privilege than um, socially disabled people, so then it's easier for them to 
take on board that they will also have their own unconscious biases when it comes to race and ethnicity. Um, Brilliant point. Mm, um, Laura is saying that she's recently done a literature review into barriers and facilitators of engaging with hard to reach service users. Um, but that she, what she's found is that hard to reach is a really unhelpful term. Uh, Louise is suggesting we need to get a balance of positive and difficult feedback and also that there shouldn't be surprises so people know what to expect before they arrive at a meeting and they know what sorts of issues are going to be brought up there. So there's quite a lot of good suggestions here. Suggestion that we talk about cultural safety rather than saying someone's racist, but then Rebecca is saying that's more palatable, but maybe it's also less powerful. So, you know, maybe we need to come back to the plain speaking. And, and remembering who is it we're trying to give, make this comfortable for. Mm. Um, and Emma Taylor is saying um, we need to work with staff first. Um, to ensure the forum's ready to listen to the difficult feedback we'll hear. But she's saying that's not just our job, something national needs to be happening on this. I think Catherine Kelly would like to say something, but doesn't know how to unmute herself. It's, uh, um, I think I've worked out how to do that now. But have we got you now, Catherine? Yeah. <laughs> would you like to share something? Um, well, I just think that um, I work um, as, a, as a white woman. I work in an organization with a lot of white women. I'm working mostly with a white client. Um, and there's a lot of discomfort. And people are wanting to do better, but really unsure how to do better and, and frightened of saying the wrong thing. So quite often just remove themselves from the discussion. Um, and so it is this in embracing the fact that we've just got to set our egos aside and really understanding our privilege. And it's, I've um, worked in my organization quite a lot with helping people to understand the concept of privilege. And there's loads of people, it's just like light bulbs going, going oh, I had no idea. And it's, you know, it's really baby steps. Yes, it would be great if we were much further down the line, but we're just not. We have to start with the baby steps. And you know, take this one step at a time. Lots of people really want to do better, um, and we need to educate ourselves. I completely get that. Um, and but people, I, as as example on the chat down the side, people are saying, "Well, how do I find out more about unconscious bias? How do I do that?" And and that's where we need to start. Um, good place to start. There are some great videos on YouTube. Um, and the uh, Rene Edo Lodge book, and there's lots of resources, increasing number of resources now, so plenty of places to look. I don't think I've said anything new here, but um, lots of people want to embrace this and want to do better. Thank you. That's a really good point. We've had a question from Laura. Can she say something about the document that the London MVP Strategic Group is developing? Yeah. Thank you, Laura. Good morning. Thanks, Hannah. Um, yeah, and Toyen and everybody, thank you very much for um, a really interesting webinar. I just wanted to quickly uh, mention something that I've mentioned in the chat lesson, which is the work that the London MVP Strategic Group is doing. We're putting together a document called um, All Maternity Voices, um, representing everyone in your area. And it, it hopefully will be a really helpful document for MVP chairs about where to um, go to find uh, a group that um, represents the diverse communities in their area. Um, but it's also at the bottom, and we're talking about how to bring the feedback that these women or these uh, people give us and how that can be taken seriously in an MVP uh, uh, setting. At the, at the back of this document, there will be um, a sort of template, if you like, about exactly what involvement the MDP has had, um, what the issues raised um, have been, what they, how they've been addressed, and, and tangibly what has been improved as a result of hearing these, these, uh, these stories. So that's 
that might actually be a really great template that MVP chairs will, or whoever uh, members will be able to fill out and take from MVP and, and kind of use um, in a more formal in a more formal way. Um, we're really hoping this document will be out very very soon. It's going through comms at the moment, so um, once it's out, we will be able to share that widely. Um, the other thing I was going to say very quickly is that at the London MVP Development Day, um, which is happening in October, we are having a focus on reducing health inequalities, inequalities and we will also be having a session on unconscious bias. Obviously, I'm aware that that's not going to be um, nationally available, but hopefully the London MVP chairs will be, um, and the London MVP members will be able to access that unconscious bias session in the development day. Thank you, um, Laura. That was really, yeah, we, we look forward to seeing how that uh, all unfolds and Stephanie wanted to. Just, just a couple of things because I'm just conscious of time. Uh, as I sit here reflecting, listening to all this great um, stuff uh, being shared, I, I wonder whether there is something nationally uh, that we can influence or at least encourage regarding an MVP member being um, speaking <coughs> or sharing their experiences at equality and diversity training that, that most organizations have to um, uh, put on. And secondly, just wanted a, a point of reassurance about the CNST incentivization scheme. So CNST is an in, insurance scheme for trust. And uh, in, in recent times, we're in the second year of incentivizing trust to um, improve their outcomes for women and their families by asking them to, uh, to meet 10 criteria, safety criteria. One of the criteria relates to feedback from you, from people like you, from people like um, National Voices uh, and Maternity Voices Partnerships, but only listen, not only listen to the feedback, but do something with it. That question is asked as a part of achieving um, your, uh, reducing your insurance premium if you meet one of these 10 criteria. Well, you have to meet 10 criteria, but one of them relates to hearing the voices of real women speak about real issues that will improve their services. So I just wanted to mention that as, as a point of, um, I'm hoping, reassurance that nationally we're also trying to do something about it because your voices uh, matter in terms of the journey for improving outcomes. Thank you, Jacqueline. And um, just to go back to, is it Kate who made a point before Laura, who was speaking? Catherine, Catherine sorry. Um, I know I said at the beginning, I don't know if you were listening then, Catherine, about this being a safe space and understanding that this is a very difficult topic for many people. And it isn't a case of that this is about bashing people and the word, we, see we have been using the word, the word racism has come up today. But I think if people understand what racism, the word actually means, you'll look at it differently. Because people, the word racism is used, I think quite out of context nowadays, when it's, it's actually more to do about a structural thing as opposed to what people assume is, you know, making job tree comments and all the rest of it. So when we are having to have these discussions, we know that, that it's not a case that any, and I'm a black woman, so I'm just going to say it's not like every time I deal with a white professional, I just automatically assume, oh yeah, this person's going to be racist. And any service user who has any type of feedback, it's not always, you know, that's not always what's going to be attached to it. But I think it's just healthy for us to understand that it has a powerful play in everything and the impact it has on women and their families. But it is great that we, this is supported, this topic is supported. This is chosen by you guys out there for us to discuss. So yeah, I just wanted to just say that and move on. Oh, we're done. Thank you to everybody for joining us. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. And very much. Um, yes during this difficult time um, and we look forward to carrying on this discussion through our hashtag uh, National Maternity Voices or and um, oh sorry hashtag Matt Voices at, and you can tweet at Matt, Matt Voice Org and Facebook um, Facebook page as well National Maternity Voices. Thank you.